So, once you've found your place, we'll all stand for the reading of the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. I don't keep throwing my pages over. <laughs> Alright, verse 23, And the Word of God says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which He was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup, of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the message. Lord, uh, waited a long time before you gave me the message for this morning. Lord, uh, uh, this is what you've presented, this is what you want delivered, and so I pray, Lord, as I always do, help me get myself out of the way, and let your Holy Spirit guide me so that everything that's said and done is done according to your purpose and will and for your glory as it ought to be done. Amen. And we pray and ask for it in Christ's name, amen. You can be seated. The ordinance of the Lord's Supper is a pictorial memorial. It's a remembrance of the incredible sacrifice that our Savior made on our behalf to secure for us eternal salvation. The purchased possession is the church. The body and the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we will this morning be taking a deep look into this topic of properly discerning the Lord's body. And so we have to begin at the beginning. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, picking it up at verse 18, down to the end of the chapter. Oh, I forgot to mention, it says there's a water bubbler back there in the corner if you need some water or anything. Alright, verse 18, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him an help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought unto them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The word of God who created all that is, that's John chapter 1 verses 1 through 3, stated it is not good that the man should be alone. I 
will make an help meet for him. To be meet for is to be suited specifically for. There in verse 22 it says, And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. It's a contraction. It means a womb man, a man with a womb. And brought her unto the man. The Lord had made a conclusion and had acted upon it, creating from man's own body a help meet for him. The Lord Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. And the individual saints collectively comprise the bride of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 5. <clears throat> Book of Romans chapter 12, verse 5, the scripture says, So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. We have not only a symbiosis with our Savior, but with each other. From there we want to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So go over one book. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you're looking at verses 13 and 14. For by one Spirit, capital S there, the Holy Spirit of God, are we all baptized into one body. And it's talking about a spiritual baptism here. It's not talking about water. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. From here go to Ephesians chapter 5. Here, Ephesians chapter 5, and you're looking at verses 30, 31, and 32. The last three, not the last three in that chapter, close to it. Ephesians 5, verse 30. For we are members of His body, of His flesh, and of His bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. This is one of the great mysteries of the church of Jesus Christ. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Earlier in the chapter, the husbands are told to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And that the wife should love her husband as the church is supposed to love its Savior. When we get into Jesus Christ at salvation, we become one flesh with Him at that very instant of salvation. There was no church of Jesus Christ before His resurrection and the receiving of His immortal and glorified body. His body, prior to his death, burial, suffering, hell, and resurrection, was a mortal human body, just like ours, in which he became sin for us, and so suffered humiliation, suffered scourging, suffered beating, suffered crucifixion, and then mortal 
death there on the cross. He became a curse in our place. It is the immortal and glorified body to which we become one with. The Lord Jesus Christ who got up out of the tomb. And it is a like body that we will receive when the Lord comes to get his bride there at the blessed hope. 1 Corinthians 15. You're still in Ephesians. Go back just a little bit. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 42 to 49. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. I was talking about this at the nursing home. You know, I've seen a lot of dead human bodies. I'm going to tell you, as soon as it, as soon as it expires, it starts to decompose. And, and I'll tell you, nothing smells as bad <laughs> as a decomposing human body. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. And boy, aren't these things a weak mess. It's raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. And the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. Quickening means to be, to make alive. A quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, that's the body we have now, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Go to Philippians from here. Philippians 3. 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, and it's vile, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. The Lord first speaks of this back in John chapter 3, where he's talking with Nicodemus. Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 6. You know, I got you doing a lot of Bible drill this morning. John, chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. From there, go to John, chapter 6. John, chapter 6. And we want to look at verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He had just gone through telling him, you know, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood and the Jews were going out of their mind because how can we do that? And he's trying to tell I'm talking to you spiritually, folks. I'm not telling you to be a cannibal. <laughs> I'm not telling you to do, you know, the, the, the 
ridiculousness of the church are wrong. No, I'm talking to you about spiritual things. Spiritual things. Okay? And he displays it over in Luke 24. I say, I know I got you running all over today. Bear with me. Luke chapter 24, you're looking at verse 36 to 40. Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. This is his appearing to the disciples in the upper room after his resurrection. And saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled, and why do, you, do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold, my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone, as you see me have. Okay? Not going to be a wisp of smoke when it comes off your coffee. Okay? The spiritual body is every bit as corporeal <coughs> as this mess. That we'll finally get rid of one day. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. One of the great marvels, great blessings is in heaven. Christ's immortal, glorified body still bears the marks of the cross for us to see. Amen. Okay. This is the body to which we are currently members in particular, as it says in 1 Corinthians 12, the resurrected, immortal, glorified Lord Jesus Christ. And if you do not discern that truth, if you are not cognizant and acknowledging of this fact, then you're placing yourself in a precarious and dangerous situation, believer. You absolutely are. Now at the Last Supper, the reference that the Lord was making, of course, was to his mortal body, which he was about to give to be broken. For our behalf, for the sins of humanity. But he commanded the disciples to keep the ordinance okay, of the Lord's Supper, this memorial, knowing, knowing, they didn't know it yet, but knowing that they and all who would be redeemed in the future, okay, by faith in him, would become a part of his glorified body. The body of Jesus Christ by marriage. And the bride of Jesus Christ. One body. Bone of his bone. Flesh of his flesh. That's the body he's talking about when he talks about discerning the body of Jesus Christ. It's you. It's the church. Okay? This is one of the supernatural actions accomplished by the Holy Spirit of God at the very instant of your salvation. <laughs> The body and blood of the incarnate Lord Jesus Christ no longer exists as that body. Though the results, praise God Almighty, the results of their sacrifice will exist forever. They being sacrificed, as it says in Hebrews 10.10, once for all, it no longer exists in that form. This is why that vile heresy of the Roman Catholic Mass is such an incredibly great insult to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because they claim that their black-robed priests have the 
authority and the power to drag the Lord Jesus Christ out of heaven at their will as often as they will and re-sacrifice him over and over and over again in his flesh and blood mortal body so that they can literally consume that flesh and drink that blood. And I know what I'm talking about. Again, I was raised as a Roman Catholic. I was being prepped for the priesthood as a young boy. I know the doctrine. Okay. I know what they teach. This is heresy and blasphemy. And it's as satanic a doctrine as there ever has been. And not discerning the truth about the condition and the situation of the Lord's body as it is now can result in some devastating results, the scripture tells us. The damnation it speaks of, it's not damnation of hell, damnation means judgment. Okay, but it's a judgment on the believer due to their not discerning the Lord's body. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread. Who's it talking about? We. For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. There's the reality of the body of Jesus Christ. It's you. It's you. Talks about weakness. Okay? This is in reference to your spiritual condition, not your physical, your physical condition. Being spiritually weak, being spiritually immature, being spiritually powerless, spiritually impotent, spiritually ineffective, remaining a milk-sucking babe in Christ rather than a strong, mature Christian soldier for the Lord. It talks about being sickly. Now this can be both spiritually and possibly physically. Okay? A sickness can be very debilitating, can it? You know something else about sickness? It can be infectious. It can spread. Sleep. Sleep can likewise be both spiritual and physical. And Paul is speaking here of sleep of death. Romans 3.11. A few scriptures for you. Oh, not me. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm Pastor Jeff. Oh, he never refers to scripture. Right? Romans 3.11. I got the right reference. I don't think I do. No, I got the wrong passage. I'm sorry. I'm, it was late at night when I was writing this. Let me see. Where am I supposed to be? Not sure where I'm supposed to be. I apologize for that. Go to Ephesians 5. I'll have to figure out what I did wrong. I mean, if I don't do this at least once a week, folks, you know, you, you, you wonder what was happening. Right? <laughs> Ephesians 5, verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever maketh manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 1 Thessalonians 5. First Thessalonians 5. And there we want to look at verses 5 through 8. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Wherefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. 
For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. The believer can be spiritually as dead as a doornail. By not discerning the Lord's body as he ought to do. Okay, the Lord's body is you. And one doing damage to that body and not repenting themselves of it might very well find themselves absent from the body and present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5, 8, uh, before their time because of their behavior. Uh, God just might say, you know, you're doing more damage than you're doing good, so we're going to bring you up, up here and give you a time out. And that's happened. Uh, let's see, we want to go back 1 Corinthians 11 again. 31 and 32. 1 Corinthians 11. 31 and 32. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Verse 28 says, But let every man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Self-examination and judgment of one's own sins and failures is crucial to one's spiritual health and well-being. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. But it's just as crucial, you know, our, our own behavior, but also towards the body as well. Okay. You know, your you know, the the mishealth of a part of your physical body can affect your entire body. Uh, you know, you have, you know, whatever like affecting your eye. It affects everything you do, you know. you know. You got a bad hip, it affects everything you do. You know? And so when individual members of the body aren't well, <laughs> okay, or are spiritually dead, it affects the whole body. You've got to think about how, not just how it affects you, but how does it affect the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's discerning the body of Jesus Christ. We are a homogenous body. Many of our members have already gone home to be with the Lord. But those that are alive here, wherever they are, not just this little congregation here, but... There are safe folks all over the city of Fitchburg. There are safe folks all over this nation, all over this world. And every one of them is a part of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and affects how that body functions. The Lord may be telling the body, do this. Okay? But if it doesn't want to <laughs> obey, or has crippled itself so it can't do what it's supposed to do. What the head wants isn't being accomplished. But also, other parts of the body have to work harder to try and do what the other part of the body's not doing. It hampers the church, the bride of Christ, from accomplishing the will of its head. I'm not going to go over there and read it for sake of time, but John chapter 13, verses 4 through 17, just after the Lord's institution 
of the memorial of the Lord's Supper, the very next thing he does is he washes the feet of the disciples. And he tells them, you don't know what I'm doing now, but you will. You will. He's teaching them to have humility. A very special humility. He's teaching them to remember to be as merciful and as forgiving and as long.